So now that, that wheel is going by itself. It is. And you're also not touching the pedals. I'm not. And we are very close to the car in front of us that is slowing down. Every day, 17 million people take to the roads in the Netherlands. And with that many commuters in a country this small, you can imagine it can be a little problematic trying to get around sometimes. We are the, the most densely populated country in Europe and almost in the world. Uh, so we really need technology like self-driving vehicles to, to solve our, our issues. These cars are the future of driving. We all know autonomous cars are coming, but these autonomous cars can talk to each other. And that's a really big deal. Self-driving vehicles take the human factors out of the, of the driving. So self-driving vehicles don't get distracted, they don't get drunk, they don't gonna, um, uh, cross the lines because they're texting behind the wheel. So today, I'll be sitting in one vehicle of a three-car platoon. With computer automation, the cars will all break at virtually the same time, and it'll all be done with no help from my driver. You're not touching the pedals or the, the steering wheel? No. This is nuts. That's crazy. Mariah DeVries is the manager of ITS Connect, an independent network of companies focused on self-driving initiatives in the Netherlands. So, this is the old one, this is the yeah. new one, right? Yes, that's the new one. And she is very anxious to see this project hit the road running. I have such a, a vision that if I, if I get into my car and just push a button, then it will bring me everywhere. Here at Delft University, they're constantly working on finding the right solutions to be able to make these cars speak to each other. This is our main uh, sensing technology. It's a radar detector sensor, and it basically uh, is used to tell us what is around the vehicle, all the objects, uh, would that be people, cars, trucks, walls. And where the radar leaves off, the vision technology takes over. The radar sensor knows, uh, sees a lot of things, uh, but doesn't know what anything is. So the camera tells us what everything is. It basically tells us if that is a human, a car, etc. In the trunk, it all comes together in the computer brain of the vehicle, giving it the ability to think and interact with other cars. In a platoon scenario, I would say, uh, on a highway, for example, uh, what you have is essentially two cars talking to each other, essentially two brains talking to each other, uh, and sharing information. Am I accelerating? Am I braking? Uh, what is my position? And even though we seem to be fine with autopiloted planes, people still seem to get hung up over the idea of letting a computer drive their car. It is scary to uh, give the control of your vehicle to a computer. Just imagine what it will do to you if you see someone driving like this in a car next to you. It, it's quite scary. Now, I get a chance to experience it myself. I'm in good hands, though. All right. Ready? Yeah. My driver, Ellen, is one of the scientists designing the communication algorithms that the cars use to talk to each other. I gotta be honest with you. I trust you as a driver, and I basically trust any person as a driver, but there's something weird about a car being responsible for my safety. Well, you can also trust a car because the car can also see with the camera and with a radar, and they also can communicate. So they can already say what they're planning to do. So then the car can respond much faster than I as a driver can, actually. First, we see how the car brakes in a normal situation with current adaptive cruise control technology. OK, we can do a first braking action. The cars ahead of us will brake suddenly. You will see that the behavior is kind of amplified. So when the first car brakes, the second car has to brake far more, and this car even has to brake more. So we come kind of close. Yeah, that's not so smooth. And so that's the kind of thing that I see on the highway all the time, where one car slows down and another car slows down, and then before you know it, people are stopped. Exactly, that's indeed how shockwaves are created. So that's what leads us to traffic jams. Now it's time to see the difference when these cars actually talk to each other, and that's called cooperative adaptive cruise control. Okay, so now you are not steering. No, I'm not, and I'm also not braking or accelerating. Now they're braking, and... It only takes 0 0.02 seconds for each following car to react. That feels safe, right? That does feel safe. That feels way safer. Yeah. That's, that was great. Wow, sign me up. This is fine. This isn't scary at all. I'm totally on board. I think this needs to be in cars right now. 
I would shake your hand and thank you, but I don't want your hands far from that wheel, so you just keep doing that. Well, this technology is going to make your life so much safer and easier, and I, I think that one day, if you don't have a self-driving vehicle, so someone will tell, tell you, oh, there's this crazy guy that is not driving a self-driving vehicle. How irresponsible is that? We here in the Netherlands take self-driving cars very seriously because we believe that it's going to be the future.